What's good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I am bringing you my WWE 2 TLC, not 2LC. The hell is even that? Today, ladies and gentlemen, I am bringing you my WWE TLC 2020 predictions. As we know, the card is coming up. The pay-per-view is coming up on this Sunday, and I am super excited for it, actually. I think there's about six matches confirmed. I'm sure they'll probably add one or two to the kickoff or something like that. As of recording, there's only six matches right now, so I'm just going to roll with that. If they end up adding any matches, I will add them to the comment section below. But coming into this show, I'm actually pretty hyped for it. I think that we're in for a pretty good show as far as the card is concerned. I'm not necessarily like over the moon for it, but I think I am looking forward to a couple of these matches for sure and looking forward to the outcome and how they progress and stuff. We got my boy Kevin Owens back on the show, which is a huge bonus for me. My man about to go to battle for the Universal Championship. Probably not going to win it, which we'll get into, but I'm still hyped for the match just to see him in action on pay-per-view. I feel like it's been a minute. So what we're going to do is dive into TLC 2020, breaking down all the matches, giving you guys my full show predictions, what I expect out of the show, what I expect out of the matches, the outcomes, and how I think it's going to play out when we get there on Sunday night for TLC. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into this show, shut the hell up, and see what the hell I'm talking about. So starting out first, guys, we have Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler defending their women's tag team championships against Asuka and a mystery partner we don't know just yet. Maybe it was announced last night. Let me let me look. It sure wasn't. So I guess this is going to be like a mystery opponent. I thought about it being possibly Charlotte. I could see Charlotte possibly doing it. You know, maybe she comes out and, you know, she turns on Asuka and that would put her right in the main event where you guys know WWE loves to put her. That would keep the tag titles on Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. So basically, we'd have a match and then Charlotte would at the end of it just kick Asuka in the face, lay her out so that the other team does retain. I can see something like that taking place. Maybe Lana comes back and fills the shoes. I highly doubt about that. But outside of that, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I would like to see what you guys think of it down in the comment section below. I haven't put too much thought into it, but I think that Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax are going to retain their titles as trash as they are. Next up, guys, is a matchup that I'm very much looking forward to, and it could be the sleeper match of the night. The Raw Tag Team Championship match between the New Day, Xavier Woods, and Kofi defending against my man Cedric Alexander and one of my all-time favorite talents, Shelton Benjamin, in the Hurt Business going at it here, and I am very much looking forward to this. I think all four guys are going to tear it up. I hope that they actually give them time. I hope that they actually give us a matchup. As long as, you know, we keep trending in this direction, I feel like they've given Cedric Alexander a ton of momentum, and I feel like that is going to ride right here, and the Hurt Business are going to own the U.S. titles and the Raw Tag Team Championships with Bobby Lashley and MVP. I think the whole Hurt Business is about to be rocking and looking really damn good over here, and so I I'm going to go with Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin to upset the New Day and claim the Raw Tag Team Championships. I think we need some new guys with a strap right here, and I think this would be beautiful. So, And I even have like a fantasy booking deal where we can have Cedric Alexander get built up and built up with this faction and then eventually turn on him or, you know, be the big breakout star from the group since he is the young buck from the group. And, you know, he could potentially make a lot of noise for his potential singles career after leaving the Hurt Business after joining them. So I'm going to go with Cedric and Shelton to win the championships, and I think that would be pretty freaking fun. Next up, guys, this is the SmackDown Women's Championship. I don't like the way I just said guys. I'm going to replay it right now. Guys, 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 guys. It may not have been that bad, but it sounded pretty damn bad in my head, Brad. That rhymed. Unintentional. Anyways, this is the SmackDown Women's Championship. Sasha Banks taking on Carmella here. You know, I think Carmella, while she's got some decent momentum, I think that uh, this is just a stepping stone for Sasha Banks, right? I mean, we're, we're building towards something much greater than this story that's taking place right here. I think this is just a title match on the road of Sasha Banks. So, for that reason, guys, I am going to go with Sasha Banks defeating Carmella. Don't expect much out of it. Maybe we'll get a decent match. I know Carmella has improved immensely in the ring, and uh, hopefully that will continue here as we continue in this matchup, and I just keep saying, just saying dumbass things. So I'm going to go with Sasha Banks to retain her championship. Don't see a reason why she would lose here, and congratulations on her Mandalorian Season 2. I think she's going to be getting some Hollywood calls very, very soon. Next up, guys, is Randy Orton taking on the Fiend Bray Wyatt with Alexa Bliss in a Firefly Inferno match. Now, I don't know what the hell to expect out of this. I just hope it's a hell of a lot better than the House of Horrors match that we got forever ago, which just reminds me and repeats in my brain how often we've seen Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton, how crappy it's been in the past. I just hope that it's much better than that. And, I mean, the bar is extremely low, and Randy Orton's one of my favorites of all time, but I just am I'm not really looking forward to this matchup. Maybe they'll bring some creativity. I always love the character-drivenness and the, the creativity. It's just like the matches typically fall flat between 
between these two. Hopefully, actually, you know what? The creativity, the projector screen bugs from WrestleMania, that was god awful. But anyways, let's move on here. Randy Orton taking on The Fiend. You know, I have a lot of things on my mind regarding this matchup because I think that we're on a crash course for Edge versus Randy Orton. Now, I don't know if that's going to be for the WWE Championship. If that's going to be for the Championship, how do you get Randy Orton the Championship by having him lose to The Fiend here? But I don't know what the future plans are for The Fiend. I mean, he was dead on arrival pretty much anyways. But for shits and giggles, I think I'm literally going to go with Randy Orton. I want to go with Randy Orton in this matchup. I'm going to go Randy Orton to defeat The Fiend Bray Wyatt in the Firefly Inferno match. Maybe he sets the whole... Oh, actually, he didn't set... Didn't the, fire, the Firefly Funhouse already burnt down, didn't it? Didn't it come back to life too? I don't effing know nothing. I'm going with Randy Orton, man. I'm just going with Randy Orton. That's it. Next up, guys, is our TLC WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and AJ Styles. You guys know that AJ Styles will have some help in his corner. However, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I think just like Sasha Banks and Carmella, this is just going to be a really good matchup that we can see on this pay-per-view here at TLC that, you know, just a lot of people want to see, and I think that is going to be enough for this matchup. I don't think we're going to get anything as far as results are concerned. I think the match will be fantastic. I mean, you got Drew McIntyre, you got AJ Styles, you got TLC involved. I mean, this one should absolutely bang. You can reference Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles in their TLC matches. I think that this one is going to slap, but I don't think we're going to see AJ become champion here. Wouldn't really make sense unless he's going to be a transitional champion with Randy Orton later. I don't know. I just don't see AJ Styles winning this thing, and I just don't think that would make much sense at this juncture. So I am going to go with Drew McIntyre to retain, but I'm very much looking forward to this match. I think that we're going to get a lot of good things in this matchup, and it should be pretty intense, and I'm happy to see another TLC match. I feel like it's been a minute since we've seen a good ladder table chair football game, so we'll see how that plays out, but I am going to go with Drew McIntyre to retain the WWE Championship, see where we go from here, but uh, I, I expect some fire gear, some fireness in this matchup. Next up, guys, we have our main event, and this may not be the main event per se. It could be Drew McIntyre and AJ Styles, but this is who I would have main event simply because Roman Reigns is the hottest thing on this show, and you guys know that the Universal Championship used to main event all the damn pay-per-views when uh, you, you guys remember when they had, they used to always make the Universal Championship main event the pay-per-view, so that's how I would keep it right here. Roman Reigns is the hottest thing he got, so that's how I would do it, but Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens, my boy coming in here, super red hot. I love Kevin Owens. You guys know this if you're a fan of the channel. Probably definitely one of my top two favorite talents in all of wrestling in the world. So Kevin Owens coming into this matchup, I would love to see this man take the, take the win, but it just would not make sense, man. Roman Reigns is on the run of his career. I think this this whole run has made his career, and I think that the, the sky's the limit now for them finally pulling the trigger on his character, dropping the skeeby scab, skeep scop, getting him in the heel character limelight, lining him up with Paul Heyman, changing the look a little bit, running the table with the Usos. I mean, this ish right now is some stuff that we have been trying to fantasy book for years, and I finally pulled the trigger on it. I just don't see that coming to an end here. As much as I love Kevin Owens, and as much as I would love him to win the championship and how much he deserves it, I just don't see that taking place. Roman Reigns is on an absolute absolute tear. And if I was fantasy booking, just spitballing right here, how sick would it be to see Paul Heyman just stab Roman in the back and it cost him the championship and the match and line himself up with Kevin Owens? That would be absolutely fantastic, but I don't see that taking place, and I want to see where this Roman thing goes and continues to build towards. So I'm going to say Roman Reigns wins the, you know, wins the matchup he retains in this TLC match. This is a TLC match. You got Roman, you got Kevin. Holy snikes, this has got to be the match of the night. It's got to be match of the night. I don't I don't care if you guys remember the Royal Rumble 2017 lockup between these two. I think it was Extreme Championship. I think it was Extreme Rules match for the Universal Championship, the red version that time. That match slapped absolute titties, so I think this one's going to do the same exact thing. And I'm going to go Roman Reigns, the big dog, the MDT, the Universal Champion, and he is going to overcome and beat Kevin Owens as crappy as it is. But I think Kevin Owens needs to do something after this, man. He is one of the most valuable things you got, and you're just wasting him. This man needs to be doing important things on television and he needs to be competing for championships and winning those championships. I know he's going to fall short here, but just after this, man, let him let him toss the man a bone. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for my TLC predictions for 2020. Guys, I'd love to know what you guys think of it down in the comment section below. What are your predictions for the show? Do you think the matches are going to be terrible? Do you think they're going to be good? Let me know down below, and what do you think the match of the night is going to be and all of that good-ish. But I think I'm going to be getting the hell out of here. Guys, that is going to do it for my TLC predictions. Again, let me know what you think of everything down in the comment section below. Below. Let's get into our random shout out before we get out of here. So this shout out is going to go to Ezekiel Holcomb and he says you should do an MDT King of the Ring and use this referring to our Triple H throne or King of Kings throne or entrance throne or whatever the hell you want to call it in our review from yesterday. If you guys missed that video definitely go check it out but I would love to do that. I actually before 
before I even started up the pick fed, I almost ordered a King of the Ring trophy, like the old Jax one that looks really, really sick. Almost ordered that, ended up not ordering it, couldn't find one for a good price. So right now that's not in the cards, like maybe after what I'm thinking, after My Damnation, but they're like, I'm so behind on everything, man. Like we should have had like eight shows posted this year and with COVID and with just everything going on, we got set back really, really far. And it really sucks because we were supposed to have like at least eight, nine shows up this year and we only are looking like we're only going to get one or two up, which is absolutely terrible. But I'm hoping we can bounce back after the new year and just rip these damn things off and be at a higher rate than we've ever been. So we'll just have to see about that and just do our absolute best. But a huge shout out to Ezekiel for that. I would love to do a King of the Ring if it was possible. If I had a team, man, see if I had a team, if I had a damn team of people, do you know what my dream is for the pick fed? To have a show on Monday, a show on like Thursday or Friday, and then a pay-per-view once a month on a weekend on a Sunday or a Saturday night. So it would be Vindication or MDT Live. I guess it'd be Vindication Monday, MDT Live Thursday, and do that every single week with a new compelling show. And then after three episodes of each, us have a pay-per-view once a month at the end of the month with both rosters featured. If we could do it, bro, that's my dream. That's my dream for the pick fed. It's just not realistic, me doing everything by myself. If I had a bunch of people to hire and I could do it, I would absolutely do it, and that would be the dream. But anyways, guys, that's gonna do it. Don't step over the line. Why don't you listen? You crossed the line, I've been beaten.